video is going to continue the topic how does a speed camera work. In this video we'll be looking at the Doppler effect. So in this video we're going to be looking at the Doppler effect. A speed camera works by sending out radio wave pulses which are reflected off your car and it measures how the frequency of that wave has been shifted. In this video we're going to be seeing how that change in frequency is related to the speed of your car. So throughout this video until the end we're going to be considering sound waves as you've got much more experience with sound waves and experiencing the Doppler effect with sound waves. So how you may have experienced the Doppler effect is when an ambulance drives past you. As the ambulance approaches you its siren has a relatively high pitch, like ee -oh, ee -oh, ee -oh. and then when the ambulance has passed you and is moving further and further away from you, you hear it with a low pitch. And so just from hearing the noise, you can tell if an ambulance is approaching you or moving away from you. So this is due to the Doppler effect. So let's have a look at a demonstration of this now. Joe Wolf has produced some really good demonstrations of this topic on his FizzClip site. So what we're going to do now is watch Joe ride on a bicycle past a microphone. So Joe has a sound source on his bike which is producing sound with a steady frequency and we'll see what's detected by the microphone. So this is showing the steady frequency on Joe's bike. Here's Joe approaching the microphone, so the microphone's the observer, and here's Joe receding. Now we're going to look at Joe again. This time Joe is wearing the microphone, which detects the sound, and he's going to ride past the source. So the source is now stationary, and Joe, the observer, is moving. So you can hear the steady pitch of the source. Here's Joe approaching the source and moving away from the source. So now you've observed the phenomenon, you've heard it for yourselves. Let's now look at the equations that we can use to describe what's going on. Now Joe explains this very well in his fizz clips, so let's go back to Joe. Let's imagine two surfers watching the waves go by. With no relative motion, they both count the same number of waves, n, in time t. So they both get a frequency n over t. Using f equals v on lambda, we find that in time t, both see a number of waves, n equals vt over lambda. One of the surfers, call her the observer, now paddles towards the other with speed v sub o. In doing so, the observer overtakes more waves. In time t, she travels vot, so she overtakes vot over lambda extra waves. These add to the n equals vt on lambda seen by a stationary observer. So our approaching observer sees, in time t, vt on lambda plus vot on lambda. This gives her a higher frequency, f dashed. Substituting f equals v on lambda, we see that she observes a frequency increased by a factor vo over v. Here I am on the bike again. In the animation, not to scale, we see peaks in the sound waves spreading out. Approaching the source, vo positive, I overtake extra waves, so I hear a higher frequency. Later, as I ride away from the source, vo negative, fewer waves reach me. So as you've just seen, if we have an observer moving towards a source, we can write down that the frequency observed by the observer, f dash, is equal to 
the frequency produced by the source, which is f, and then this is multiplied by the velocity of waves in that medium. So for sound waves travelling through air, they have a velocity of 343 metres per second. So that's what we're considering at the moment. With the speed camera, it uses electromagnetic waves, which have a velocity of 3.00 times 10 to the 8 metres per second through air and a vacuum. So we've got the velocity of the sound through the medium, plus the velocity of the observer, which we give the symbol V subscript O, and then this is all divided by the velocity of sound through the medium, or the velocity of waves through that medium. So we've got the equation F dash is equal to F times V plus VO over V. Now if the observer is moving away from the source, or receding from the source, instead of having a positive sign in front of the velocity of the observer, we have a negative sign. So in the case where the observer is moving away from the source, we have the equation for the frequency observed by the observer, f dash is equal to f times v minus vo, all divided by v. Let's try a problem now where we'll be using this equation. So the question is, a police car is stopped on the side of the road with its siren producing a steady frequency of 700 hertz. You approach and then pass the police car, travelling at 60 km per hour. The speed of sound in air is 343 m per second. Part A. What frequency do you hear as you approach the siren? Part B. What frequency do you hear as you recede from the siren? Okay, so in order to do this, we're going to need to use the formula F dash, the frequency which is heard, is the frequency at the source times V plus the velocity of the observer over V. So we know V is equal to 343 metres per second. Now the velocity of the observer, we're told, is 60 kilometres per hour. So that's 60 times 1,000 over 60 times 60, which is equal to 16.67 metres per second. Now to do part A, we have this positive sign here as the observer is approaching the source. So the observed frequency F dash is equal to the frequency at the source, which we're told is 700 hertz, times 343 plus 16.67 over 343. So all we need to do is solve this on the calculator. When we do that, we get 734 hertz. Now for part B, we've now got that the observer is moving away from the source, and so we need to change the sign here. So we've got F dash is equal to F, V minus V naught, V O over V. So this is equal to 700 times 343 minus 16.67 over 343 and solving this one on the calculator we get 666 hertz. Now let's consider what happens in the case where we have a stationary observer and a source moves past the observer. Joe Wolfe explains this very well again so let's cut back to the fizz clips and look at how Joe explains this. Now let's have a moving source with speed V sub S. The source S is in a different position when it emits each wave peak, so the circles are no longer concentric. The wavelength is decreased ahead of the source and increased behind it. In time T, the wave spreads VT, while the source travels VST. The wavelength is therefore decreased ahead of the source by a fraction, Vs on V. Behind the source, the wavelength is increased by the same fraction. Now the wave still travels at speed V, so a stationary observer hears 
f dashed equals v over lambda dashed. And substitution gives this expression for the new frequency. Here, we take Vs as positive if the source approaches and negative if it goes away. So Joe's just derived for you F dash is equal to F over 1 minus Vs on V. Now let's just rearrange this a bit. If we times both the top and the bottom by V, so we're multiplying by 1, so that's allowed, then we end up with F, we'll pull this F out the front, and we've got V over V minus Vs. So this is the equation that describes what happens to the observed frequency as a source approaches the observer. So we've seen that when an observer is stationary and the source is moving, we can write the equation as F dash, the frequency observed by the observer is equal to F, the frequency produced by the source, times the velocity of waves in the medium divided by the velocity of waves in the medium minus the velocity of the source, which is written as V subscript S. Now that's what happens as the source approaches the observer. If the source is moving away from the observer, then we need to change the sign in front of the Vs term, the velocity of the source. So in the case that the source is receding from the observer, we have the equation F dash is equal to F times V over V plus Vs. So let's look at a problem now where we can use these equations to solve it. So the question is, your clock radio awakens you with a steady irritating frequency of 600 hertz. One morning it malfunctions and cannot be turned off. In frustration, you drop the clock radio out of your four-storey dorm window 15 metres from the ground. Assume the speed of sound in air is 343 metres per second. As you listen to the falling clock radio, what frequency do you hear just before it strikes the ground? So let's start by drawing a diagram. Here's you dropping a clock radio out the window. You're 15 metres above the ground and the clock radio is going to move away from you. Now you're the observer and the clock radio is the source in this case. So it's a moving source. So we've got that F dash is equal to F and then we'll have V and in this case the source is moving away from you. So if it's moving away from you we have V plus Vs. We know V, that's 343. We know the frequency that the source produces, it's 600 hertz. We've been asked to calculate F dash, the frequency just before it hits the ground. But in order to do that, we're going to need to work out the velocity just before it hits the ground. So to do that, we're going to need to go back to those kinematic equations. So we're going to need to use the formula V squared equals V naught squared. So the final velocity squared equals the initial velocity squared plus 2A times the distance. Okay, so V squared, that's the velocity of the source squared just before it hits the ground. You're dropping it from rest. So this is zero. Now, it's accelerating downwards at 9.8 meters per second per second and it's falling downwards, so its displacement is minus 15 metres. So both these are downwards, so they have negatives. And so we've got 2 times 9.8 times 15, so that's 294. And so Vs is equal to the square root of 294, which is equal to 17.1 metres per second. So now we've got everything and we can substitute into this formula. So F dash is equal to 600 times 343 over 343 plus 17.1. So solving this on the calculator, we get 571 hertz. So that's the solution to that problem. Now what we can do is we can put this all together. 
to see what happens in the case where both the observer and the source are moving. Now once again, Joe explains this very well. So let's cut back to Joe's explanation of what happens when we put it all together. Finally, if both observer and source are moving, the two factors both apply, and so the expression is this one. Remember the sign convention, positive if approaching, negative if going away. So you've seen that for the case where the observer, in this case pictured as the man on the bike, is approaching the source, which is the ambulance in this case, we can work out the frequency observed by the observer using the formula, the F dash is equal to F times V plus VO, all divided by V minus VS. In all these equations, the VO stands for the velocity of the observer and the VS stands for the velocity of the source. Now, in the case that the source is approaching the observer but the observer is moving away from the source, so for example in a chase type situation, we would have the equation F dash is equal to F times V minus VO all divided by V minus VS. Now in the case where both the observer and the source were moving away, we'd have F dash is equal to F times V minus VO divided by V plus VS. And the final case is where the source is moving away from the observer, but the observer is moving towards the source, so the observer is trying to catch up to the source. In that case, the equation is F dash is equal to F times V plus VO or divided by V plus Vs. So basically, if you remember the standard equation, F dash is equal to F V plus V naught divided by V minus Vs, that describes the case when both the observer and the source are approaching each other. If one of them's moving away, then you just need to change the sign in front of that term. So if the observer starts to move away, just switch the sign in front of the VO term, if the source moves away, just switch the sign in front of the source term. If they both move away, switch the sign in front of both terms. OK, let's use this to solve a problem now. So the question is, as you ride your bike at a speed of 40 km per hour, a police car with its siren screeching at a frequency of 700 Hz comes up behind you with a speed of 70 km per hour. What frequency do, do you detect? The speed of sound in air is 343 meters per second. So let's start by sketching a diagram. Here's you, the observer, and here's the police car. The police car's behind you and it's approaching you. This is the source and you're moving away from the police car. So this is the situation we have. So we're going to have to use the equation F dash is equal to F times, now you're moving away from the source, so that's V minus V of the observer, and the source is approaching the observer, so that's V minus Vs. So now all we need to do is work out what each of these terms is. The velocity of the observer is 40 kilometers per hour, which is equal to 40 times 1000 over 60 times 60, which is equal to 11.11 meters per second. The velocity of the source is 70 kilometers an hour, so 70 times 1,000 over 60 times 60, which is equal to 19.44 meters per second. So we have that this is equal to 700 times 343 minus 11.11 over 343 minus 19.44. And solving this on the calculator, we end up with 718 hertz. Now what you could do is you could extend the question and say, well, what would happen at once the police car had overtaken you? And can you work out the frequency then? So how about you have a go at that on your own? So, so far, we've been considering sound waves. This is because sound waves travel relatively slowly compared to the speed of light. So the velocity of sound in air varies with temperature, but at room temperature it's around about 343 meters per second. Now light waves on the other hand 
travel at 3.00 times 10 to the 8 meters per second, so a lot faster, which is why you always see lightning before you hear thunder in a thunderstorm, because the lightning travels towards you much faster than the sound of the thunder does. So speed cameras use radio waves, which are part of the electromagnetic spectrum, and so they travel at this faster speed of 3 times 10 to the 8 meters per second. So the same equations apply when we are using electromagnetic waves. You may want to write the equation with a C standing for the speed of light rather than the V standing for the velocity of the wave in the medium, but these have exactly the same meaning. So let's do a calculation now where we'll work out the frequency detected by a radar as a car is travelling past at a very reasonable speed. So the question is, a speed camera uses radio waves with a wavelength of 3 centimetres. Calculate the frequency of the waves that are reflected off a car travelling at 60 kilometres per hour. Okay, so let's start by drawing a diagram. Here's our speed camera, and here's our car traveling away from the speed camera. Now what we're actually going to have to do is we're going to need to break this problem into two parts. So first of all, we're going to imagine that this speed camera is the source of the waves, which it is. It's producing the radio waves, and they're traveling towards this car. Now this is the observer. So we can work out that the velocity of the observer is equal to 60 kilometers per hour, which is equal to 60 times 1,000 meters per hour, and divided by 60 times 60, we'll get it into meters per second. So that's 16.67 meters per second. And so we can work out what frequency the observer in the car observes. So that frequency is given by F dash is equal to F, now, in this case, the observer is moving away from the source. So it's V minus V observer over V. The source is stationary, so there's no Vs term here. Now, what we're going to need to know is what's the frequency produced by the source. We're told that the wavelength is 3 centimetres, and so we're going to need to use V equals F lambda, and so F is equal to V over lambda. Now, these are radio waves, so they have a speed of 3.00 times 10 to the 8 meters per second. That's the speed of light divided by 0 0.0300. So this is equal to 1.00 times 10 to the 10 hertz. So this is the sound which is detected at the car. But what happens is that sound is now reflected off the car, so the car is now the source, and it is detected back at the speed camera. So the reflected pulse travels back this way. And so the car is reflecting wavelengths with this frequency, F dash, and they go back to the speed camera. So we can work out the frequency detected by the speed camera. It's given by the frequency reflected by the car, so the F dash, which comes from up here. And now in this case, the source is moving, but the observer is stationary. So this is V over V. Now the source is moving away from the observer. So that's V plus Vs. And this is also equal, it's still traveling at 60 kilometers per hour, so it's still 16.67. So let's put these two together now. We've got F dabble dash, the frequency detected at the speed camera is F dash, which is F times V minus VO over V times V over V plus VS. We simply put this expression here in instead of the F dash here. Now you can see these Vs will cancel each other out, and these VOs are both equal to 16.67. So finally, this is equal to 1.00 times 10 to the 10. And now V, that's 3 times 10 to the 8 minus 16.67. This is tiny compared to that. Over 3 times 10 to the 8 plus 16.67. So this is approximately equal to 1.00 times 10 to the 10 hertz. It's a tiny shift. 
But luckily for us, the speed cameras can detect very, very tiny shifts. So to three significant figures, there is no change. But this speed camera can work to many significant figures. So it can actually detect the signal from the car. It can use interference to get exactly what the frequency is. So now you've seen how a speed camera works. It sends out a radio pulse which is reflected off your car and it then detects the frequency of the radio pulse which it receives back and this tells it exactly how fast you are travelling. In the next video we're going to be going back to mechanics and having a look at relative velocities. So we'll be working out what's the relative velocity between you and a police car if the police car starts to give chase, for example. Special thanks to Sebastian Frick for filming this video and extra special thanks to Joe Wolf for producing fizz clips which we made use of during this video.